Wow, I'd like to welcome Dr. Hans Grün from Ojai. We are very, very excited to have Dr. Grün as part of our online Ojai Peace Day celebration with the UN theme, Shaping Peace Together. Dr. Hans is a holistic medical expert and a really great treasure in our community. And I experienced him in January of this year as he founded a weekend event, the first Ojai Health Intensive with amazing multifaceted support for every participant. I truly can say he, his expertise and his devotion to health and being in service is remarkable. Yeah, so Hans, welcome. And I'm going to just read a little short bio so people have a broader sense of, of your background. So uh, Dr. Hans Gruen has close to 40 years of experience in the medical field with an office in Los Angeles and Ojai. His professional experience in Europe and the United States puts him at the forefront of integrative and preventative medicine. His patient-centered functional medicine approach treats the whole person and sees the body as one integrated system, not just a collection of independent organs. Dr. Gruen is also a well-known lecturer on alternative and mind-body medicine and authors a best-selling self-help audio series in German. Welcome, Hans, and the theme today, Shaping Peace Together. And what does this theme mean for you and your healing work? What gives you hope for the Earth and the future generations? Right. Um, well, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Brian. Uh, shaping Peace Together. Well, it's us together, this togetherness. You know, I mean, me being German, I have an exquisite sensitivity of how not to do it, which means the othering, the exclusion, the uh, emphasizing our differences, the difference between in-group and out-group, is the beginning of us potentially excluding people and the roots of violence and war. Especially then, you know, Nazis, when you then manage to make groups, the Jews, the homosexuals, the socialists, the communists as subhuman, yeah? And then you can do damage without even having that conscience. It's just incredible, you know, how that went. Um, so, so it's all about, you know, peace starting with us as a relationship of inclusion. And uh, this means ultimately, obviously on a personal psychological level, a expansion of our circle of compassion, let's say. How inclusive am I? Am I in my psychological development more on a tribal level where it's all about me uh, potentially or my tribe? A am I on a more on an ethno uh, oriented level, focused level, where it's all about my in-group, my church, my book, my holy book, my Bible, whatever it is, or am I more in an expansive state of including, uh, including, being inclusive, yeah, world inclusive. So where we emphasize uh, our commonality, our common humanity, over the differences, yeah? the inclusiveness over the exclusiveness. And, uh, and it is that um, that is essential for peace. Now, strangely enough, you know, many people can have this wonderful uh, psychological expansion, but strangely enough, if it goes very close to the body and their own life, and that is to some extent even exemplified with COVID, there's a whole other relationship. So, and at the core of this question is, again, how do you define yourself? What do you define as in versus out? Yeah, what is me and what is strange, foreign, alien out there? And the old paradigm, which obviously we still have and most people have in our society is that this skin encapsulated thing, ego, you want to call it that way, um, is surrounded by a world that is potentially hostile. Yeah? Nature is hostile, 
the world around us is hostile. There's all these malicious bacteria. There's all these dangerous viruses. There are parasites, what have you, and they want to do us harm. Yeah, and uh, and we are victim to a hostile environment. We, they, and uh, and the and the result of that is that we declare war on everything outside. Yeah? In the same way, we declare war on things, on people we don't see as ourselves. And, uh, and that war in medicine is the predominant language. We have a militaristic medical language. Yeah? We kill bacteria, the war on, on cancer, um, the enemy. And then we're also proud about the powerful weapons of modern medicine. So always our language is is a, a militaristic language where it's all about burning and killing and, uh, and getting rid of that which is alien to us. Um, now, obviously, meanwhile, uh, after 70 years of antibiotics and cancer therapies and what have you, we came to recognize that there's a dark side to our conquest of nature and that means it actually to some strange ways in some strange ways unforeseen for many decades backfires you know there were super resistant super bugs there's in chemotherapy with all the kill and burn uh which sometimes is very successful not to leave that out but we create often resistant stem cancer stem cells which then uh, resist uh, the strongest uh, therapies and obviously the side effects on on living tissues what have you so um, so the whole picture then us against them us victimized in a hostile world against the environment is all ultimately came then to a break when we discovered the microbiome yeah so the role of our gut bacteria in our health and suddenly we noticed that in that lowly part of ourselves, there hosts our immune system, there sits our immune system. Not only that, there sits our detoxification capacity, there sits our ability to absorb things, to generate things, to generate vitamins. So part of our immune system, part of our brain health, part of our longevity, part of our resiliency in general, all sits in the function of the microbiome. Now, surprise, surprise, all the bad guys which you've been shooting at are all in there, you know, just that they are somewhat imbalanced and somewhat um, in the diversity, in the richness of our microbiome, they are embedded and maybe in some decades or even years in the future, we will discover that these so-called bad guys, so easy to make it all good and bad, will have a profound positive function for us, you know, as they're part of the whole orchestra and tapestry. So that was the first thing. And then science showed us, you know, that these threaded, threaded viruses are actually essential for us. They're updates, you know, the updates that give us information about the environment and that are often embedded into our genes. Our DNA is 30% viral origin, you know. If virus, so the viruses are essential to our survival. As, as the basic principles. If viruses would have been hostile to us from the beginning, we would not have made it up the food chain. You know, they've been around from the very, very beginning. So this whole idea is just even now from, the, from a scientific perspective, falling, more, for, falling down more and more. And then if you look at nature, you know, there's symbiosis, you know, nature works together. And yes, there's parasitic symbiosis, a parasitic relationship, but they're in a minority, you know, mostly it's, it's mutualistic, you know, it's for mutual benefit. So that is our relationship to life, mutually beneficial. You know, and even parasitic, you know, parasites don't have an interest to kill you, otherwise they lose their, their food the food source and their host, you know, that, so the whole life is organized in a, in a supportive, mutually supportive uh, fashion. So, and then the next step, the latest step now is that we discover that the vitality and the health of the food we eat, just like the microbiome now being us and not other, the food we eat is part of that equation too. It is also us us and not other 
and the food and the vitality and the health of that food profoundly influences our health, profoundly influences our longevity, profoundly influences our uh, resistance to diseases uh, and vitality. So you cannot separate anymore us against them. You know, so us is actually that expanded thing. So pouring toxins onto our food, destroying our topsoil and so on, we are destroying ourselves just as we are destroying our microbiome with junk food and antibiotics and, and uh, a very narrow and unhealthy um, diet. So, so it's all about balance and relationship to these things. That's the old idea. Uh, in medicine of the terrain, it's more important than the aggressor, than the bug, than the germ. It's the terrain on which the germ falls and which it means, which means for us our resilience and our overall health and our living in balance with nature, that is us. So if you relate that to COVID, for example, uh, you know, that just recently a study came out that 9% of all COVID patients who die of COVID die of COVID by itself. Over 90% die of COVID plus comorbidities, which is normally inflammatory, yeah? diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, heart disease, and what have you. Uh, but normally inflammatory diseases now, which are the core of our chronic disease state, yeah? diabetes, obesity, all that stuff comes from us eating too much sugar and junk food, basically. And uh, now, if you hear that, 90% comorbidities, and the virus is by far not as aggressive if we would be resilient, you would assume that now everybody would go for changing their lifestyle, eating healthier and more greens and, uh, and sleeping more and exercising and just doing all these basic lifestyle things that make us resilient. But surprise, surprise, or not so surprise, junk food consumption goes up during COVID. Yeah? The COVID obesity raises because everybody now is afraid and fear, you know, leads us to these old habitual behaviors. So it's, 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 it's just incredible instead of really seeing that we have to take responsibility, it's easy to feel victimized and do nothing. And it's more difficult to take responsibility and do something, but this is where the solution is. So we have to change some of our lifestyle, change our relationship to these bugs, live in balance with nature, and in, in general, uh, get away from the junk food. So that's, that's kind of the resume you know, of the whole thing. So that we want to make peace with the world, we have to start with us and this most intimate relationship to who we think we are in relationship to, uh, to our microbiome, to the food, to the environment. And this is inclusive. And if it's inclusive, you cannot make war. Yeah? So, mm. all right. Wow. Thank you, Hans. So it was wonderful to really see your holistic perspective, uh, how to strengthen our re resilience to really exercise more, have healthy diet, reflect on who am I in this life and uh, not exclude, include, uh, you know, what, what we are here for. So using this time of COVID-19 uh, to, to be still and reflect on that. But I, I think your militaristic um, view on how we approach disease and the viruses and microbes, that that doesn't work, I think might be really helpful for so many people to really see it since humans are around 200,000 years or longer, we live with microbes and our body actually can deal with it. If you have a healthy immune system, then we don't have to worry so much. Exactly right, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, uh, because I'm not directly in the health field, I, I just hear through that how to make peace with ourselves, you know, how do we, you know, because obviously peace begins with me, but if I'm at war in my body and I have all this inflammation, I'm susceptible. My immune system is compromised through all of that. And so this is a, a, a great message, you know, where we talk about shaping peace together. It's like, okay, all of my parts need to become harmonious. 
and, and, and peaceful. So thank, thank you, you really so much for, for this inspiration, Hans. I just really love. All right, you're very welcome. Thing. You're very welcome anytime. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I'm gonna uh, bring this recording to a close. And thank you. This message you, will be going much. out on Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, from peaceful. our hearts, from hearts to you, Hans. Thanks so much for the yeah, view. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.